to thank the uh, uh, Sophie and Yuri and uh, Marius for the invitation. And what I'm going to talk about is a joint work with, mainly a joint work with, with uh, Benji Weiss. But I'll say something, I guess, also about a work with uh, uh, Yiftach um, Dayan, who is here. So let me start with, with some background. Some background. So uh, I'm, I'm thinking about a general group. The generality is a countable group. infinite, but otherwise no, no, no other assumption to begin with. And uh, what I'm aiming at is uh, uh, the category is the category of dynamical system. I'll call them dynamical systems. And these objects are uh, a standard probability space, the algebra maybe I'll denote like that. It's the probability space, and I have an action of my group. So this I will denote like that, maybe. So G, actually, it stands for G uh, runs, uh, arranges over the uh, element of the group. And uh, usually, I will assume two uh, requirements. The first is a godicity. which means that mu a is either 0 or 1 if uh, tga is equal to a. Of course, everything is mod mu for all g. And freeness. That's a free action if, for every g, we have a countable group, so we don't need to worry about uh, the too many g's. So for every g, uh, the set of fixed points has measure zero. That's for every g, of course, not the identity. Identity is, is e. So so this these are my basic objects. And well, there is a question: how many? Uh, in that generality, how many systems like that actually exist. But just to be concrete, there is always these examples. This is, the, this is called the Bernoulli systems. And they are, in this case, x is just, say, 0, 1 to the power g. g is my group, it's a counter group. So this is a compact uh, metric space, a counter set. And the action is by translation, quite clear. I'm not going to write it. And then I am free to choose the measure. And the measure can be p, uh, mu p, which is just p 1 minus p to the power g. That's a Bernoulli system. You can think of p as 1 half, 1 half. So whatever the group is, then at least these measures are invariant. So it's not empty. And if, in many other cases, for, for example, where, where G is a free group on two generators, then we have a huge uh, collection of, of, of the systems. Uh, and let me just say one more word. When G is amenable, then again, there is a very uh, well-developed theory of these systems. And uh, I will now take one example of uh, an amenable group. And this is the group G, the uh, Z of integers. Uh, 
And I will uh, formulate again the theorem that we have seen so many times before in this uh, meeting. So I have f in L1 of my mu and then 1 over n of sum converges to the integral under my ergodicity assumption f d mu for every uh, mu almost surely. That's the uh, uh, Birkhoff pointwise uh, convergence theorem. And now let's uh, suppose further that our space state space X is Polish. What does that mean? It has a metric and uh, it's, a, it's a, a separable metric space and um, it's complete. The metric is complete. So we have an extra structure. Okay? So in this case, we can improve on, on, on this uh, uh, statement and we can say that uh, in this case, One can show that almost every x in x is generic. It's a generic point. What does that mean? This means that this convergence holds for continuous functions, uh, bounded continuous functions, say. Uh, um, Um, and then we can formulate this by saying that 1 over n sum of delta, this is Dirac measure, t to the n x converges weak star to mu. Meaning, whenever we apply this to a continuous function, we get, we get this... Uh, Maybe uh, maybe a restricted class of consumer, but let's not. Pardon? So I don't want to assume compactness. I will come to this in a minute. So that's why I say maybe some restricted class of functions. But that's that's exactly my next point. Uh, the next point is um, the definition of a compactification. So here I said that X is Polish. Where did I say that? Somewhere here. And now I want to talk about a compactification of such a system. So uh, X into X tilde, and I have my T also. So here it will be T tilde. Is a compactification Uh, so this is a map if pi is a homeomorphism uh, and it intertwines the action and the range is dense and pi x closure is x tilde. So in that case, uh, and of course, this is compact. OK, so this is the uh, uh, situation I would like to consider. Excuse me? I want it to be a homeomorphism. So the <laughs> Can you see it there? <laughs> now, what do I do to get this up? I guess this. 
So the image of X will be a, den it will be a dense G delta subset because that's, that's what happens. And we can relax this uh, last thing that I want to say in this context. We can relax so X is uh, quasi generic point if for some subsequence we have the same thing. for all f in, well, maybe if f x is compact for, for all, all these kind of functions. And now we come to the uh, definition of, I will call it frequently, lower frequently transitive, okay? This will become uh, frequently hypercyclic, okay? So you notice what I, I, I did so far is I changed the category. And instead of talking about standard spaces, I'm talking about actually polished spaces with the topology. I'm not just interested in the Boyle structure. And uh, the, the point of view of uh, uh, the paper uh, with, with Iftar is to consider uh, the operator dynamics theory as a special case of Polish dynamics. And that's a, not a new theme. It was done by, by several authors. Uh, Benji uh, Weist uh, wrote uh, some papers on this, and uh, also uh, Ethan Aiken and I did, and there, there are probably many others. But, but what does that mean? It means that uh, for every open set, which is not empty, and it's open. Uh, if we count the number of times where we enter u and between 0 and n, so we count how many times this happens, we divide by n, then the lim inf is positive, and we can talk about, uh, analogously, about uh, upper frequent, that's lower frequent transitive. So this is hypercyclic, uh, uh, frequently hypercyclic in the linear case, and this also has a name, I, I believe, uh, uh, it was introduced by uh, Carl that it's upper frequently transitive, so this is analogous thickness. And now, what is the connection between? Yeah, okay. I mean, so so if we just if we just look at at, at Birkhoff's theorem, then we see immediately that if we have a a, a quasi generic point for an ergodic measure then uh, we immediately uh, 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 see that our Polish system, or more specifically our linear system, is frequently hypercyclic. So we have these two notions. So on one hand, we have this completely, I would say, topological uh, condition. And on the other hand, we have the existence of an invariant measure. And I'm asking, what is the connection between these two objects? And it is subtle, because when we are dealing with Polish spaces, we don't have compactness. So, so these measures may vanish somehow at infinity. The sum of the delta measures can vanish. And that actually can happen. So here is a, a proposition that 
we prove uh, if Tach and I. So let XT be a uh, Polish dynamical system. So if we have this condition, uh, uh, lower frequently transitive implies in every compactification, Uh, there exists mu, so invariant under t, these are the probability measures invariant under t, and a point x in x, not in x tilde, such that x is quasi generic for mu. So this is one side. Shouldn't it be M tilde of T tilde? Yes, it should be. Thank you. And the second one is if we have this situation, so if there exists for some, some compactification and mu and x in x as above, then we get the fact that xt is upper frequently transitive. So this explains some, to some extent what, what really happens. And we see that we need to consider compactifications to see that. We, don't, we, don't, we sometimes do, do not see this. So there is a, a very nice paper of uh, Sophie and uh, Madaron, and, and they are dealing with the question, when can you realize, in the linear situation, when can you realize this measure on the space itself? So the situation is nice when the uh, uh, space is reflexive. That's one of the main results. And for C0, for example, you cannot uh, uh, find a, a, any ergodic measure which will do it. It's still open whether there is an ergodic measure always, even in the Hilbert case, I guess. So, so this is, I, I would suggest this may be an interesting question to consider the example on C0 and determine what really happens in, the, in any compactification this will be. And I haven't seen any, any treatment of this question, what, what can be a compactification of, of, of a linear system and what will be the... Uh, um, okay, so, so all of this is um, about... I'm here, I'm done with the background, and how do I do this now? And now I want to go to the second uh, point and ask what happens in a general case where the group is not Z. All of this goes pretty easily over to the amenable case. When the group is amenable, then, then most of what I've said about Z can, can, can be pushed to that situation. But what, what happens when it's not? So here, uh, so here is what I suggest to do. Instead of considering So, so I have G, my group, and eta, a probability measure on G, 
is um, aperiodic, strictly aperiodic. If its support is not contained in a coset of a proper normal subgroup. So I have such a measure. For example, if the, uh, the group is finitely generated, I can take eta to be 1 over maybe 4 elements, delta E. I want this there, and then uh, uh, some delta uh, uh, maybe D. So the group is generated by D elements. So this is a good example. This will always be the case. Um, if the group is finitely generated. And I can consider the operator A, which corresponds to eta. And it acts on F applied to x. This is the sum um, of f uh, tg of x, eta x. The sum is over g. This is just an example. In general, it will be some measure. And I'll it's a probability measure, so this makes sense. And this gives me an operator. This is called a random walk operator. And what I'm going to use is a theorem that may be attributed some version of it to a Seledet. And the, the one that I will, 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 will uh, quote here is due to um, Jones. So where shall I put it here, maybe? Jones, uh, Rosenblatt, and um, Templeman, 94. So A, eta N, F converges to the projection of f onto the subspace of invariant functions. That's the notation. So it's like the Birkhoff theorem. And there are two kinds of convergence. So this is in norm for f in LP, p between 1 and infinity. And pointwise, where p is between 1 and infinity. So 1 is excluded, unfortunately. But that's, that's what we want. And um, And here I just pause with the development of the ideas that I want to, to, to present. And I'm asking what will be perhaps, so I present a question. What is the analog for LFT, so uh, lower frequently transitive, for such a group? I mean. Most of the discussion in, so far in this theory of uh, uh, linear operators, linear dynamics is in terms of, of, of one operator. And now, uh, I say this is a vast area. We can extend the, the scope and talk about 
uh, uh, general groups. Of course, one can also talk about topological group, and I will, I will say some words about that later. But uh, uh, for the time being, our G is just uh, uh, countable group, and we can we can. So I don't know. Maybe I haven't thought about much about that. But for example, how about this? If we iterate this, so a eta squared of f, you can easily see. It's just uh, uh, what you, you sum over G and over H, and so you just get the same formula, F of T G X, but now the square, convolutional square of eta comes in. That's 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 what happens. G? Pardon? Thank you. That's what I mean. This is the weight, and when I iterate, I just take the convolution. Also one line above. Thank you. So, 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 what about this? So I, I can, I can again look at my Polish space or linear space, a Banach space, and I, I look at an open non-empty set. And I consider the number of G's such that, um, no, I want, I want, I'm sorry, I, I, what I want here is perhaps, um, Yeah, I mean, it doesn't matter. So, so, so I, I, I look at, at the measure eta n, and I count the g's such that t uh, n. So, so actually, this is this measure, right? I pick a point, so I want to ask that there should be an x such that if I apply this to, 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 to x, and I find myself back in u. Uh, what is the measure of this? Mm, is that what I say? No, it's. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, it's maybe just that, <laughs> right? But the idea is clear. So, so I want this to be. Uh, uh, to, to take the lim inf, and I want this to be positive. So this is some notion of, 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 of maybe not not the best. Maybe I should take Chazao uh, averages or to make to make it always exist or some. Well, it's lim inf, so it always exists. I don't know. I, I'm just suggesting. I'm just suggesting uh, uh, some notion should be should replace this uh, this thing. OK, and now I come to the main theorem that I want to announce. Uh, so this is theorem with Benji. And that's what it says. There exists a Hilbert space, specifically it will be L2 of G and W, this will be weights. And a representation uh, of my group G into linear operators on this Hilbert space. So S is a linear operator such that. For every ergodic object that I had before, dynamical system, so x, x, mu, tg, there exists a 
probability measure nu on H with full support That means every open, non-empty open set gets positive measure, such that the dynamical systems, on the one hand, I have my x, and on the other hand, I get h, maybe Borel sets of h, or completion, and nu. And this particular representation, it's universal. It's good for all of them simultaneously. So nu is changing, but not the action and not the space. And they are isomorphic. So I guess the beginning uh, of the theory of linear dynamics, there was some kind of a Naive assumption that if you require a dynamical system to be linear, that's a serious restriction. And indeed it is. If, if it's a finite dimensional Banach space, then you cannot do it. But usually, but, but I would say this theorem is kind of the <laughs> extreme opposite of that. I mean, in a single Hilbert space with a single representation, and for any group, you can represent all of them together. So it's very surprising, but after you, if you're familiar with, 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 with uh, uh, with the Gothic theory and with, with, with questions of models, then it's not that surprising. So representation necessarily unbounded? What do you mean unbounded? The norms are uniformly bounded or not? Power bound. The, the <laughs> SGR, the, you do it a unitary representation or just an operator? No, you cannot have it unitary. I mean, unitary is never hypercyclic. Yeah, exactly. So it must be unbounded. Of course. But, but for example, if I, if I start with uh, these finitely generated things, and that's how we prove our theorem, then each of these, of course, is a bounded operator, and then it generates certain group. Yeah, yeah, yeah. OK, so now where am I? And what, uh, what's my, uh, how, how much time do I have left? OK. So, uh, uh, 20 minutes. I, I, I will not, uh, I'll not push it to the limit, and uh, I can now uh, write. So, so just uh, 15. <laughs> okay, 15. <laughs> uh, okay, I mean, just a few uh, uh, remarks. A few remarks before I go on to talk about the proof. Uh, so a few remarks. Every such G admits a mixing uh, dynamical system. So if I'm in a mixing dynamical system, every, G, every element G, so every for which Tgn is infinite will act ergodically. So the corresponding will act ergodically. This is a property of mixing dynamical system. It will act ergodically, and hence, so will SG, 
its image on the Hilbert space, so it will be a hypercyclic operator. So Where is such? <laughs> countable G. Yeah. The, 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 that's the subject of the theorem. So every such group for which the theorem applies, which is any countable group, will, will, will have. In particular, if I start with Z, so I get a hypercyclic operator with this. So this, this is just a remark. TG. What? TG in the second line. <laughs> I'm looking at a particular oper element G, group element. So you want the powers to be an infinite set? Yeah. So you don't need the T. <laughs> this is my notation. This is TG. This is the, I, I don't write GX, I write TGX. Okay. So Where should I go? Another thing is we can generalize the, ah, okay. Another thing is we can generalize this to topological groups. So just one remark. The second one is if G is locally compact, second countable, and that's important, uh, uh, compactly generated, Then we can prove the same theorem. Now there are more, some, some kind of uh, technical problems, but, but th that can be done. And there are other cases where we, I wouldn't mention them, but the theory can be extended to, to, to continuous groups. So that's, that's again, a uh, vast place for, for, for generalizations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just wanted to point out that it is hypercyclic. That's 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 the point. Of course. Um, okay. So about the proof. What shall I do in terms of boards? So there are two parts to the proof. I lost count. What is it, three <laughs> or four? About the proof. So as I said, there are two parts. First of all, the construction of the Hilbert space and the representation. That's universal, so it should be simultaneously for all uh, 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 dynamical systems. And the second part will be given mu, the di specific dynamical system, I'll, ha I'll have to create the new, which will sit on this space with this action. So, so that's, the first, that's the first task. And here I will just... Um, Uh, do I have it here? Yes. So I'm considering, which one? No. I think it's here. Yes, so, so this, think of this example. And yes, yes, I forgot something important. So, so the way we prove it is first, we assume that G is finitely generated. So it's easy to construct the representation because I only have to, to deal with these finitely many generators. And then it's really a, a trick that uses uh, a, a, an embedding algebraic theorem which says that every 
accountable group can be embedded into actually a group with two generators. So, so this will do it. But, but now I'm in this, in this situation, so I'm looking at, at this particular measure, say ADA. Uh, maybe I changed its name to Rho. <laughs> so this is one thing, Rho, just change of notation. Second thing that I want is a sequence, Pn of positive numbers, they converge to one, so it's a probability vector, and I want Pn over Pn plus one, the soup of this will be less than or equal to a constant C. And then I can generate my weights, and the weights are defined as this function, wg, is the sum of pn rho convolutional power of g. This will be the weight, and the Hilbert space will be set of all psi in r to the g, all sequences indexed by g, such that, let's denote this like that, the sum of c squared of g, wg, converges. Well, I mean, this is the definition of the norm, and then, then h will be, space h will be the L2 of g and w, which is uh, simply the set of all Xs such that C is less than infinity. That's the Hilbert space. And the representation is uh, clear, just translation. That's the last component, S A C at G is just C at G and I translate on the right. So this will make it a group uh, homomorphism. I can extend it to the whole group. And the uh, main lemma is, and it's not hard, SA, this is the, the, the uh, operator norm, is smaller than 2D plus 1 times C. So there are D generators, and C is this constant that I choose. It can be arbitrary. And, uh, and then I get this. So in particular, I already defined the representation, and, and everything works. And now, for B is about the construction of new given <coughs> mu. Mu. Can you <coughs> Pardon? Addition of S, you want too small, it's difficult to read. S A at C, evaluated at the point G, is the same as C at G A. The, trans the obvious thing. Yeah. Nothing complicated here, but we needed this construction to make these operators bounded. So it's just a technical trick that you require this, and then you check and you see that. I, I, I won't get into this, but it's, it's not hard. So, so the hardest part of the proof is this, how to construct this. And here we are going to use this operator ergodic theorem that I cited before. So start with any f in L4 of mu. And the reason I need 4 and 2 is not enough is because I have to deal with uh, uh, 
remember we had the almost everywhere con convergence only for p greater than one, so that's why we need it here. And I, I, I use this operator. I use the operator or row of f. Maybe you can get the convergence also for L1, because you are using a general theorem which is for p greater than one, but because your group is, uh, is countable, and so your uh, eta, your rho, is absolutely continuous, then there are two good cases. If the random right. work is, uh, is dissipated, so everything converges to zero anyhow. And if it's conservative, then you have a Harris recurrence, and then this is the theorem of uh, Shlomo Horowitz that you have almost everywhere convergence for Harris recurrence. Okay, we didn't take this into account, but it's just a technical point. It doesn't really matter, as you can see. Because the G is uh, countable. Yeah. So we will not be able to use it in the other case, and we want to, to yeah. but, okay. So, no, yeah, okay. So, 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 um, so now I can define, uh, uh, you see, phi f will be, phi f is the uh, isomorphism. Phi f will send um, x into h. This will be the isomorphism. It depends on the function f. And then I will define phi f of x. This will be the vector f of t g x uh, g in g. So this is, of course, a priori in r to the g, but it will be in h. It will be in h. And the reason it will be in H is exactly this uh, convergence theorem, because we can compute and see that compute and see that so sum of F squared of TGX multiplied by the weight G, and the sum is over all of G, is the same as the sum of Pn of A to the N rho F squared evaluated at X. And this converges. That's the point. This converges almost everywhere, so we really defined a, a, a map, and it is indeed into H. And then one checks easily that um, that we have the right commutation relation, so let me write it here. So phi f of t uh, h x is what? By definition, it is this, first g and then h at x. So this runs over g. And this is the same as f, because this is a representation, t, g, a, and this is an action. And this is just s, h of f, t, g, x, g in g, which is the same as s, h of phi, f, x. So the commutation comes just from the definition immediately, and we get indeed a map. So the proof will be complete. To complete the proof, we need to find an f in L4 of mu such that Phi f will be, first of all, one to one, an isomorphism. And second, if I write the push forward uh, of nu as nu, this, of course, will be the, the, the measure that I'm looking for. And I want the support of this measure to be all of H. 
So I have two objects. And now, <laughs> now one has to dirty one's hands and uh, start working with, 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 with this uh, dynamical system. And I will not give you the details here. It's really uh, a bit messy. Uh, we have our system. And we need something. So, so how much time do I have? How, how many? Oh, OK, so I, I can't say much, but we need some replacement for, for uh, Rochlin's lemma. I mean, we have to concoct somehow this function. And um, we, somehow, we somehow do it. So, so I have three, only three minutes. I, I, want to, I won't go, get into more details, but this can be done. And you have to, 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 to work with, because uh, we're not working with, with amenable groups. So you have to develop some other methods. And there is some, something like, um, um, Rochlin's lemma, a very restricted version that we use uh, to, to, to construct this. So, so I'll, I'll say no more about that. And I, in the few uh, minutes that I, I have left, I want to talk about Sophie's improvement or viewpoint on our work. She, she wrote a very nice work. And let me just cite her theorem, and then I'll explain. Uh, I'll say some words about it. So very quickly, she came up with a follow-up to our paper. And she's proving the following theorem. I'll just write it down. Let A be a bounded linear operator on the Banach space Z. Suppose Zn integer indexed uh, is a sequence in this Banach space such that a z n is z n plus 1 for every n. I didn't say, I didn't require a to be uh, invertible for every n in z. So going backwards, there may be more than one, but this is a choice. <coughs> and now we have these conditions. First one is the span of this sequence is all of our space. Second, there exists f finite such that the same span, but omitting f, is not everything. So maybe you only need to omit 0, but in general, finite subset. And the third one, most important one, I guess, the series. Sigma Zn is unconditionally convergence in Z. Then A is universal. This is a short hand for for this. So the group is Z, and 
same, same statement. Now that's a very uh, nice thing. What it's a priori, I mean, looking at the proof that I presented to you here in outlines, this avoids the first part altogether. You don't, you're assuming, you're starting from a sequence that is unconditionally convergent, so, so you can define the, the, the operator, and, and it's, it's an obvious one, I mean, it's, it's this operator, I mean, the one you started from, and you get it, once you verify this condition, you get, you get this freely. So, the actual work that, that Sophie is doing is in fact very similar to what we're doing, it's more or less the same proof for, 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 for proving this statement, but the idea to take uh, to take examples and check whether this really happens and immediately you get, you get this, this thing is, is really very helpful. So she can generalize what we did is good for LP, that's little LP, that's, that's easy to see, but she can broaden the scope and talk about other uh, 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 Banach spaces and many other corollaries. So, so but the, the, I would say the different, the, the, the disadvantage of, of, of her her method, perhaps, is that what do you do with other groups other than Z? So I will finish here. Thank you. Are there any questions or comments? I mean, uh, you said during your talk that uh, when you have a microphone, but I can't hear you, <laughs> although Sorry. I'm so close. Sorry. Sorry. And so you say during your talk that uh, when one knew some things about models, uh, one could say that your result was uh, quite natural in a sense. Yes. So what are the things about models one is supposed to know? In order well, to uh, uh, if you were trained in ergodic theory, you would know that Benji had a, a theorem that says that there exists uh, a subshift, I guess. No, it cannot be a subshift, I'm sorry. There exists a, a, a compact metric space and a homeomorphism, which admits sufficiently many invariant measures to represent every dynamical system. Yeah, so of course that's, that's, that's the theorem behind this. What we do is we do it on a Hilbert space, but he did it many years before in the general setup. Are there any obstructions to a similar theorem for non-singular transformations? Ooh. So, so nothing I think has been done along models, even forget about linear stuff. I mean, just think about the ergodic theory of stationary measures. So a measure is stationary. So we had this eta, or rho, <laughs> I changed the name. Uh, this is a measure on the group. You can take a measure on the space, mu, on x, and you can convolve this two. And if this is true, you say that the measure is stationary. So if you want to do non-singular theory, that's the uh, best place to start because that's non-singular necessarily and you have much more information than in the usual case. But even in this particular case, there is very little literature about models. So if you ask me about linear system, that's two or three steps ahead. We don't know much about models even for stationary systems. But it's always in the background because it may be useful, so we think about this problem. <laughs>